All right, welcome everybody. Saturday sweep series. Good morning on a Saturday. I think we have a couple left. We have just a couple left. I think we do 17 in its entirety, and I think we're down to after this. I think we only got two left. Uh, so it's been a nice run, you know. But at some point, you got to hang up the cleats a little and, and take a little break. Uh, we'll talk. Uh, we'll talk about the market. Uh, again, I find this market fascinating um, based on the rotation and the sentiment. We spoke about this last week. We saw more of that rotation. If you guys remember, uh, last week we spoke about how they're constantly rotating money uh, from group to group, names to names, and by doing that, limiting the downside in a sense. You know, you'll get like what we're getting right now, that sort of drift, right? The market drift lower. Um, it feels like there's some weakness out there, but you pull up a chart and, you know, there's, there's not much going on. Uh, it's sort of, it feels like the market's not even moving. Right? And you hear that a lot. You'll hear that uh, from a lot of people out there, a lot of traders on Twitter. You'll hear, oh, the range is awful. Um, yeah, the market's fixed to, uh, to finish at a certain spot. You know, it's pretty much dead all day, and it's dead for a reason. But, you know, in my opinion, like, we had the Jewish holidays at the end of last week. So that took, obviously, some juice out of it, some volume out of it. But the rotation is the reason why this has been going on. And you see a lot of these pullbacks prior in the past, um, there were maybe one or two days, if you guys remember, uh, the last pullback that Comey, when Comey was going to testify, it felt like everything came down together, right? Everything got hit at the same time. Like, think back now. Can you remember how many times, you could probably count on one hand, where the whole market came down together? I'm talking about tech, biotech, um, uh, you know, financials healthcare, everything. And that's usually what happens in a correction, right? In a correction, in, in my opinion, in a legitimate correction, there is no hiding spot. Right? Maybe it's gold, that sort of thing. Um, but we, we haven't had even signs of that. And like I said, you'll get one or two days um, throughout a little consolidation of that where I'll get bearish sentiment all riled up. And then, you know, before you know, we're, we're breaking out of that um, consolidation and moving to highs. So this is what's been going on uh, of recent here. And underneath the hood, there's some interesting things we'll, we'll talk about. Okay, uh, let's go over some names in this way. I also want to give you a couple names yeah, to keep an eye on this week. A lot of the names, here's the one thing, and not to jump around, the one thing that I'm not going to say I'm concerned about, but we need to see, I think, some rotation in some of the under-the-radar names because a lot of the groups are hot, okay? I mean, flat, plain and simple, they're, they've gotten a little too hot. So they need to breathe, and I just don't think the risk-reward on some of these things um, is worth it from here, all right? Like, let's take an example like Netflix, which has been an animal, okay? One of the better fang names, right? If there's one thing we're seeing is some rotation at a fang, not Netflix. Um, but you look here now, you know, you've you've come a long way, and you've come a long way out of this base here where the action started to heat up, and you know you're going to get caught up in those technicals, uh, the old breakout trade, you know, and it gets enticing here because you you want to jump the breakout, uh, and it may happen. But the problem is, it's long in the tooth. You know, you're coming long, uh, further on in this grind. You can see some of the stuff I look at, bottom of the screen, sentiment stuff, um, showing that in, whether a rally is extended or not. You can see that, you know, this, this rally is a bit extended. And that's why I look at these indicators. Uh, just to give me quick synopsis rather than me trying to figure things out on my own. You know, it's kind of obvious that this chart is a bit extended from where the action started. So that's kind of a lot of the stuff I'm seeing out there. Let me give you another one. 
Um, but the action's still been solid. All right, Netflix. Splunk. This name, you know, just Friday caught um, an opening bull risky, a player open. In other words, he sold puts to buy calls. Let me pull that up so you guys can. So let me show you the chart first of all. The action here, if you guys remember, we were talking about Splunk. It was even pre-earnings. It started down here, had this little rally, came back, then continued, then had earnings, had the gap up, and hasn't stopped. You know, so I just have a tough time getting in at these levels for anything more than a quick trade. I want to state that. You know, if you're going to trade the name and looking for a quick pop, that's a different story. But to try to get involved at a, at a certain level up here and looking for that extended rally, um, you know, I don't feel as, as comfortable as I would down where the initial activity started up. So there's just another name. Let me show the the action though. This is my point that the action continues to be, you know, good looking action that comes in. Let's see, where am I here? Oh, that's not what I wanted. Hold on. Here is the hold on. Yeah, I think, and and that's the question we're going to be faced, us who follow flow especially, what do you do with names that are seeing repeat activity, impressive repeat activity, but have come a long way, whether it's the sector that's come a long way or the flow itself. You know what I mean? The flow itself meaning... You know, this is not initial sweeper activity. We're talking about a name 10 sweepers deep. Here's the good-looking combo on uh, on this Splunk. So there you can see a player sold 1750 plus November 57 and a half puts, 40 cents, to buy 1750 November 75 calls for a buck 10. So he laid out about 70 cents and you know, sold some out of the money puts, buying some out of the money calls. It's a good looking bet. You know, if it was initial activity, I'd be quite excited about a thing like this. You know, this late, like I said, Splunk has caught a ton of sweepers. It makes it a little more difficult. It makes it a little more difficult. Let me open up the chat. I want to open up. Hold on. I thought I had it open. What the? What I wanted, I didn't want to put too much of a burden on the webinar because it was telling me signal issues. All right, so here's Splunk. You know, here's some of the blocks um, yesterday. Uh, I'm sorry, some of the uh, sweeper activity yesterday that had some size behind it. And wasn't you know wasn't too many that were good looking action. You had the Splunk. Um, where is the this Expedia order right here? Can you make this Expedia order out here? That was the trade of the day. Did I load up here? Where is it? Oh yeah. Hang on. All right, so yeah, the Expedia order. Let's go to this one right here. NLNK. Uh, you guys know this name, right? NLNK, that biotech name. So this was the story here yesterday. Uh, first of all, NLNK. We know this name, uh, and we get pretty excited about action in this name because a lot of members caught this move here. See this couple day move gap up and go here? Uh, not me, of course, but a couple of guys in the room um, caught, a nice, caught a nice chunk out of that. 
I caught some sweeper activity, had a two-day move, big one. So make a long story short, yesterday uh, we see some uh, under the radar activity come in um, Thursday, not yesterday, Thursday, small, you know, pretty small. And then yesterday we see um, some additional tack on activity come in, a little more size for this type of name. And you could see the move it had yesterday, quite a move, nice move for a day trade. Um, right here, you know, so this you get a better look at it right here. Let me show you. I got my door. Can you make out that chart there? I got this thing in my way, you don't see it. So, right here is where the uh, the activity came in. Honestly, it wasn't that long, it felt like maybe um, about a good 10 minutes, but it was probably less than that. Uh, and you can see here Jan Sweeper 500, Jan 16s, um, November's. 1,000 November 16s for 50 cents. I think those double at the high, maybe more than that. And then um, you had more November activity. The day before that, it was October 16s. So we kind of were, you know, the name was on our screen, uh, on our radars. You know, we know it well. And some sweeper activity came in. And then you get a move from, you know, 1050, 1170. And that's a home run. In my eyes, yeah, a lot of people took um, three quarters off, left the runner, that sort of thing. You know, day traders sell their their chunks, um, but yeah, that was that was fantastic on a day with not a ton of action yesterday. Let me get to uh, this. Can you guys make that out? Can I pull this up? I don't know if you guys can make that out. Can you make this screenshot out? Um, you know, pretty okay. Can you make it out? Yeah, all right. Just to get the idea, maybe. Um, this is the AMD dude yesterday hitting the bid, selling puts. So he came in yesterday, and he was pounding on the bid side of these October puts. Uh, primarily... It was the, what was it, the, the, yeah, the 12s. But he hit up some 13s as well. Okay. So, I mean, my interpretation of this, for those of you who, who maybe aren't aware, if you sell puts to open, that is a bullish strategy. Extremely bullish when you see somebody come in and do that in size. Um, basically, in simple English, all you need to know is, when you see a put seller, short put seller, a lot of times that will put in a nice floor, okay? Now, the problem comes in with the upside, trying to figure out the upside. That becomes the issue. But if you're an equities player, okay, where, I don't know, where the hell are all of the equities players? They're like dinosaurs out there. But if you, if you trade stock, um, this is something you may be interested in, okay? Because... This tells you that there will be support on any weakness. Maybe it's something you want to keep on, you know, keep on your screen. And when you see weakness, that will be a buying opportunity, knowing that the put seller is, you know, hit this up nicely. So there's a couple ways you can play it, um, but it doesn't mean all the time. Sometimes you get a big reaction to the upside, but it doesn't mean all the time that you're going to get some sort of rocket reaction to the upside. Okay, a lot of times call buying or call sweeper activity follows, and you may get that. Uh, but put sellers usually put in a nice floor. I'm trying to think of um, some sharp put sellers, recent sharp put sellers. But usually what you see is they'll come into weakness, they'll test the bottom over the course of you know the next month or so. In other words, test that level or test those lows where the action came in, and then all of a sudden grind higher from there. Once you stop looking, a lot of times it'll just grind higher from there. So this is solid um, as far as through the October expiration, and who knows, this guy may just roll these out. That's what usually happens with these things. They just continuously roll them out and do it over and over and over again. So if AMD ends up becoming real, there's some real rally behind this AMD, this guy would just continuously 
roll these puts out, up, and strikes, and continue to do it and taking the cash. All right, so AMD, we all know, uh, unless you were under a rock, had that Tesla news, hit NVIDIA. Um, they actually faded the news pretty hard. But, you know, you had a big move going in. It's AMD. It's a different animal, okay? It's a different stock, AMD, than uh, an NVIDIA or any high beta, high flyer. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of hands in there, you know. So, but ultimately, the flow looks incredible in AMD, and I, I still see some further out, and have been seeing this for quite a while. So it's nothing new, but seeing some further out, like home run bets. You know what I mean? Eighteen dollar, twenty dollar bets, like that stuff, uh, further out in time. So it tells you that they still think. Uh, this thing has the capabilities of a big winner. Um, it's just, it's not going to be as smooth. You know, AMD is almost like um, like a BlackBerry or, uh, I don't even know, I guess Micron was once in that category. You know, Micron uh, had a tough time really gathering steam uh, at lower levels and then finally got loose. So, you know, once AMD gets loose, it'll be a different story, but it's still in that mode where they're, they're sellers. There are sellers in there. Each and every at rally, there's sellers that are come in or have been in, in the name for a while and sell the stock. All right, so you had some bullish uh, put selling there in AMD. What's this? Oh, that's the Splunk. I had it here. Why was I even looking for it? Oh, I made myself crazy. Uh, where is this one other one here that I wanted to show you? I don't even think I posted it, but I'll get it from here. The... The Expedia trade. So if you can see here, oh, this Expedia sweeper. So basically about 2,977. October 146 calls. He swept for 360. Uh, that's a 700 plus thousand dollar sweep. That's pretty big for Expedia. And you look at this Expedia, you know, kind of the opposite of some of these hot names, right? Where they lost their CEO uh, to Uber, I think it was, right? And this has been an unbelievable performer, finally got hit on that news whether it's an excuse or legitimate, who knows, and, you know, has been consolidating. I mean, that's that's what this is, consolidating a big-time move here, you know, strong move. So if, again, if you were eyeing Expedia throughout this rally and just couldn't get yourself to buy it because there really wasn't any legit consolidation, you finally got it, and we're starting to see some real flow come back in the name. And that's the stuff you want to look for out of a consolidation. Okay. You can see sentiment over here got beat up pretty bad. Obviously, you know, the stock was weak. Um, and I think there was a Jan block, a huge Jan buyer, uh, pretty much, I think it was right around these levels here. So he was a bit underwater. Now he's back. And you have this October sweeper. So the one thing we were talking about in the steam room on Friday, you, you, I came in and you had to chase plus 250, which annoys the dig lights out of us. You, know, you don't want to chase that, especially in this type of market. So maybe you want to see it come in. Maybe you put on a little position, look to add if it comes in, that, that sort of thing. You know, you can play with it a little bit. Um, you know, you really don't want to go all in up three dollars on any given day uh, so that's the only thing but Expedia definitely on the radar nice action into consolidation and really hefty sweep on Friday all right uh, another name that's been catching uh, some solid wood that you usually we tend to ignore right is this Verizon so I don't know if it's the Tima Sprint uh, stuff that's going on, because uh, Teamless has been really active, Sprint has been pretty active, uh, and Verizon has really picked up the pace throughout this whole push. 
Verizon really has uh, had an uptick in buying, especially, I would say, the last this last week. So we're starting to see names like this uh, really see some lift. I, I'll give you another one, GE, and you don't have to tell me. GE is one stock I ignore any sort of flow in forever. And there would never be anything really sharp or aggressive in GE, but you'd catch a block. You know, there'd be some size blocks in there. And obviously, there's a lot of funds in the name. There's hedging and all that stuff. Um, but GE has seen some really aggressive sweeper activity on, what was it, Wednesday or Thursday? One of those days. I mean, they loaded November and uh, March calls. Loaded. November, I think it was November's, they bought over 50,000 of the November, uh, was it 25, 25 and a half, 25 and a half, I think it was. So, yeah, GE, again, I, I'll give you an example of another name like that, that I ignored. Some guys in the room caught it, and I give them props, because I ignored it. This Pfizer. I I would I always ignore action in this Pfizer. Again, you'll see blocks. You know, you see some big blocks. And Pfizer would never do anything. You know, it's Pfizer. Stock never moved. Who who cares about Pfizer, right? And then all of a sudden, you know, you start seeing you start seeing the pace of the call sweeper activity. That's what I'm trying to stress. It's the pace. You know, it's not just one big call block and that's it. You start seeing call sweeper, call sweeper, call sweeper, and you start looking at the numbers. Wow, you know that was a that was an eight hundred thousand bet right there. Wow, you know that was over a million bucks right there. And you know the, again, sweeper of the sweeper, and you know by the time I took notice, I'm being honest with you. By the time I said, "Wow, this Pfizer is really starting to heat up action wise," the stock was gone, and there were people in the room who played it, and I give it, I give them credit. Uh, you know, it wasn't my doing necessarily, you know, it wasn't my pushing because I didn't really catch on until it was too late and the action really got hot. So that's kind of what is going on right now in the GE and um, Verizon a little further on. But the GE um, really starting to heat up down here the past couple of days. Okay, so, you know, that's that's always worth a look. If, listen, if you don't like the name, you don't have to play it, but always, always worth a look. Always worth a look when you see action pick up like that. Um, you remember we were talking about, there's a couple of names you've got to go over, not, again, to brag about winners, just to understand what went on here and why it worked, okay? And listen, when... There's just a regular, normal action. And I'm talking about sweeper activity. Of course, you're going to run into losers. I mean, losers are a part of the game. Okay, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that you're never going to lose when you trade off sweeper activity. Okay, but at the same time, I want to stress that when you stick to and you take a selective approach to the best of the sweeper activity out there, okay, and we're talking... And we've spoke numerous times on what the definition of the best is, right? When they show an effort to keep coming, keep coming back for more and more and more. That's where you see some nice returns, nice win percentages, hit percentages, stuff like that. Okay, you still got to money manage properly, obviously. But, you know, that's where the real sizzle is. And this IGT we spoke about, right, was one of them. They just kept coming back over and over and over again. Um, and it was a name I played every single day during the week to catch it. You know, as a day trade, I made it my business to, and there was action every day. But just to make sure I'm in it and to make some money off of it, that's how special the action was. And a lot of swing traders make, you know, made a killing, made a nice little... Nice little hit off this thing. All right, so this IGT had a nice move. Now, up here, again, this is my philosophy. Not a lot of people have the same philosophy. Up here, 
it's done for me. You got it? It's done for me. You should be in some runners. You should be maybe in some roll-up and out positions. You should have taken some profit at the least, take some risk off the table. But now I'm not looking to buy this thing at all. You may have a different tune about it. Other people who follow activity obviously have a different tune about it. God, I could go on a rant over that this week, but I'm not even going to start there. You know, but my impression, my feeling is once you get the move, you should be holding runners, and that's it. Race stops and that sort of thing. Okay. Same thing in fold, which actually came in Friday, but, you know, again, had a move, so some profit-taking, which I think was a smart thing. You know, we've been talking about this fold for quite a bit, right? And... I mean, you probably, this chart doesn't even do it justice, but let me show you exactly what went on here in this fold. So you had the activity, here you had a pullback, okay? You had the activity really start to heat up in this little consolidation off this pullback, right? Pullback, bounce, sideways. And they really started coming after um, some Jan calls. And at the same time, they were selling Jan puts to buy those calls, which is extremely bullish. Okay. Then they started sprinkling in some October activity. Now, this was all down here and then started to lift, and we continued to see the action come in. Okay. Then you had this little bend here where, again, that's normal. You have a nice move higher. You know, people looking to just chase a breakout. They get caught, shaken out, you know, some consolidation, and then you get this little rip here. So, but from this level to this level, percentage-wise, you're talking about a $12 number to $15.16. Okay, percentage-wise, in this time frame, you can't expect more than that. Now, you can hope for more than that on some runners. You can hope to hold a runner into some FDA data approval and catch that, but you can't expect, okay, that this thing is going to go from a straight, you know, in a straight line from 12 to 30 without more risk involved in a biotech. All right, so I even, that's, that's the statement I made. I said, if you're looking for the bigger bang out of this, if this is not enough for you, then you know, you're going to have a different type of strategy in this market. You're going to find a tough time. But one, be make sure you're okay with giving your profits up. And if you get caught in some FDA data, you know, think about it. You didn't have to take the risk yet of that, of this thing halting or anything like that. If you did, you might be singing a different tune. All right, so I get the questions again. I mean, a gazillion of them on Twitter. Am I buying fold up here up here and that's where i'm you know i had to post that tweet it, you're out of your mind if you don't lock some in up here forget about buying it up here i'm not buying it up here i wouldn't buy it up here it totally goes against everything i believe in all right so that's fold i just wanted to talk about our two names that um you know, we spoke about the IGT, the fold. Uh, another name that's been looking solid is this Yandanks. Okay. But again, you've got to understand that there's a ton of action in there. Okay. They're loaded to the gills in November's and Jan calls. But you had this move. So in other words, if you had this entry here, you know, you don't want to start buying it up here for anything more than a trade. If you rolled up and out some profitable position from here, that's fine. Okay, but you don't you want to avoid chasing because these things will continue to see action to the end, to the bitter end. That's what the smart money does. I you know, you heard me say that many times. They roll up and out and they put money in their pockets. That's how they that's their profit taking. That's their form of profit taking. So if you're quick enough, you can trade around that. But you don't want to get caught holding a bag while the smart money is actually taking some profit. Yeah, they're still bullish, 
but that's how they let their winners run, you know? So the young thing's the same thing. Looks good. Um, you know, if it catches more sweeper activity, could be worth a quickie, you know, a quick trade off the momentum. It'll be a plus for you guys that are holding some positions, thinking you could see a lot more than this. Let's say you had Novembers and Jans, you know, you were holding for a little more than that. That's where the additional action can help you out. But as far as buying and putting on new positions up here, if you missed the entry down here where they kept coming, it's just not my, uh, not, this is, in other words, this is not initial activity. You know, this is second, third string level activity up here. And we didn't even see it yet. I'm just saying ahead of time. So Jan Dates has looked good. Um, you know, there's been there's been some nice ones. Also, this JCI we spoke about numerous times. Kind of got stuck here recently. Uh, but still looking okay. Got crushed. And then they really tattooed Jan Calls. Um, we've seen some cheaper stuff in recent days. Uh, not the quality hasn't been there as far as flow um, as it was initially. So they started here. You had a, a little bit of a lift here, you know, had trouble at these highs, again at these highs. So kind of got stuck here. Uh, we'll see if she could get out. Okay, but that's been um, some really strong activity. So a little bit of a lift, but nothing crazy out of that yet. Um, I know a couple people that are still in some jans, so they're hoping this thing can, can bust out. Uh, some other names that were interesting, M-I-K, Michaels. Now, this is a thinner name option-wise, so um, you probably should take the approach you're willing to lose whatever you put into the calls if you're playing the calls. Uh, but here's the story of M-I-K. Unusual sweeper activity right here, okay? It was pre-earnings, so we kind of were stuck. Right? We, we don't want to ride it into earnings. Ended up gapping up huge off earnings, okay? Uh, this is a name that rarely sees sweeper activity. They opened, I think, the top open interest position before earnings. They caught this pop. Went dead. Went quiet. No flow, no flow, no flow. Now, in this little sideways action here, they have aggressively come after November calls. November 22 and a half, to be exact. All right, so that, that raises some eyebrows, right? That this thing that saw activity pre-earnings caught the gap. Now she went quiet, a little bit of pullback off the highs, and they're coming after it again and hitting the same strike. I think now um, November 22 and a half is by far the largest position of open interest. The only thing I would say about this, that not concerned, but I would like to see Cleaner action again here would make me feel really good. It's still, I think, worth a shot anyway. But the activity that came in at the end of the week was tied to stock, was stock replacement. Okay, and in simple English, what that means is they sold a block of common equity and replaced it with calls. They actually replaced it with a risk reversal. Okay, so that's necessarily not necessarily bearish. Some people take it as bullish. I don't take it as bullish at all. Okay, so I want to see because again, I'm looking for aggressive activity, right? If somebody feels really good about something going, they wouldn't sell stock. They would just buy the damn thing, right? Makes sense. So that's why I don't take it as extremely bullish. Um, but the ideal scenario would be they start to hit this thing, let's say, next week. It's got time till November anyway, uh, but some cleaner action comes in again, and or maybe they come in and hit October's, kind of like they, what they did with Fold a little bit. They started uh, nibbling in the October's, and it gave us a heads up that it may be in play now, you know, that sort of thing. So I've gotten a lot of questions on this MIK. Again, Worth of spin, in my opinion, I mean, considering what a lot of us play anyway, worth a spin off the action, no doubt. Um, but the cherry on top would be they come after it at least one more time with clean action. 
I would love to see that. All right, then there's another interesting play here, NRG, um, which goes against a little bit, I'm kind of being a hypocrite here when I say that I have an interest in an NRG because you hear me over and over tell you that once a name catches unusual sweeper activity, okay, aggressive sweeper activity, and the move happens, the news, you catch the news, you're lucky enough to catch the news, and it's out there in the public, you got to wash your hands with it. No matter what the action is, it's just never as strong as a signal once the egg has hatched. Okay, that's my opinion. Now, here, this is a little interesting because you have Elliott Management that is known for sweeper activity. Every, anytime we see really aggressive sweeper activity and we get news that Elliott Management took a stake a couple weeks later, I mean, it's like clockwork, okay? That's what happened with this thing. NRG was sweeping the living daylights out of this thing, and then Elliott took a stake. That's what happened here, okay? So, you know, continued to catch flow throughout this whole entire move. Actually, this little downdraft, they were selling stock, like I mentioned with the MIK, they were selling stock and replacing it with blocks of calls. There were some huge blocks of calls going off on this NRG, and they were stock replacement. Okay? What changed here, exactly here, where you see this little lift, and in my opinion, that's why you saw this little lift, sweepers. Clean sweepers, not tied to stock. Okay, so basically I just gave you the whole play-by-play -play -play on NRG, and you can make your decision from there. I think it's worth keeping on your screen no matter what, um, but I basically gave you play-by-play -play, play -play commentary there. Unusual aggressive sweeper activity. Elliot takes a stake. Flow continues throughout. This downdraft here, blocks of stock are bought but they replace stock. I mean, blocks of calls are bought, but they replace stock. Big blocks, million dollar blocks. And right here, clean sweepers start to hit this name up again. Now, the reason why I take notice on that, it might be a heads up that something's in play. Okay? Something's in play. Maybe... There's some sort of news. There was, uh, the news was Elliot is looking to sell some assets. You know, maybe there's some positive news uh, they're playing on, on the horizon there. Maybe they just think the stock is heading higher. Maybe they want to own, aggressively own it here. Okay, so the flow changed a bit here where there wasn't stock replacement aggressive sweepers. That's why this thing is on my radar. So, I mean, the way I'm going to play it, if I see aggressive sweeper activity, I'm day trading it no matter what. No matter what. All right. Um, there's a couple play, uh, ways you can play it. You could be already in it. Okay, like I said with the MIK, there's probably a lot worse you've played. So this is actually some quality to it. You can wait and see if they hit it again. All right. The risk you take with that is if you happen to get a lift, you're chasing. The risk you take with that is you may the news may hatch before you even get in. So there's a couple things to think about with this NRG. Not to make it sound complicated, but it gets a little more complicated when it's not initial activity. It's that simple. You know, as opposed to like, like I said, like a fold where, you know, it's initial action. You don't really have to think. You start your position right where they, right around the level they are hitting it. And that's it. You know, you put your stops in place or you your risk management in place, and you play it according to your game plan. Or like an IGT, same thing. You know, once you've come to the realization that this thing's in play, you get in, you try not to think about, oh, what this or that. You know, we all, we all have the tendency to try to figure out what's going on. Okay? In my opinion, when there's no catalyst, it's even better. So if you can't figure something out, you know, figure out what's going on, it's even better. But... Once the action is worthy of a play and it's initial activity, there's no reason to even think. You just fire. 
All right, some of the other stuff you gotta you gotta put some thought in, and it's it's a preference type of thing. You know what I mean? It's a preference type of thing. Um, also, I just want to hit up on some of these things. Do you see? We we talk about this every week. These auto names. I think Jim, you just mentioned VLPH. I, I just my jaw drops. First of all, I never knew there were so many auto supply names out there before in my life. I'm in this game, what, 20 plus years now? I never knew so many existed. Because they've been so suppressed and underwater for so long. You know? But a name like this DLPH, I, I posted it on um, on Twitter, on my personal Twitter as well. Just good looking sweeper activity coming into this name and has been, what the hell's wrong with this chart? Has been a strong name. Um, Hold on. A strong name throughout, but just look at this move. Look how strong of a move. And the action, I can't even, why is it up there? The action doesn't even do it justice, man. It doesn't even do it justice. Can somebody explain what the hell happened to this chart? So you can see this lift here. Um, the action really got hot. You see this sideways pattern here? Long sideways consolidation after a move. Right out of here, the action really started to heat up, okay? So it caught some action here, had a little lift, then back into a little consolidation. And then right here, it caught the best-looking sweeper, in my opinion, right here. Here was the problem. It was pre-earnings. I remember it like it was yesterday, okay? It was the day before earnings. The beauty about that, it was down at the open, off earnings, and look what it did closed green, and then started heading higher and catching more flow. And it's just been that slow grind where, you know, you're not really necessarily paying attention. To, oh, I know what I did. You're not paying attention to the move because it's slow. But then you look ahead a couple of weeks and look at this nice lift, you know, from what, the low 90s to now 103 approaching. And they started sweeping the 105s up here. There's so many names like this, guys, in the in the auto sector. It is mind-boggling. I'll give you another one. My opinion, the beauty of buttes. And if that makes any sense to you guys. Um, what a beautiful thing here. And a lot of us in the room are in awe of it. Okay? This is where this auto flow started up okay you ever hear this name monroe m-n-r-o anybody hear this doc no so this is the story here okay yeah i never heard of it either man um so look at this selling okay um if i could go back even where look at this look at this what a the menagerie look at this Disaster, right? Complete disaster. No technician in the world would even have this stock on their screen, okay? And for good reason. But I've never seen a call buy on this name in my life, in my life, okay? All of a sudden, literally, on this day, into the lows. You see this bar right here, into the lows? A buyer of Jan 55 calls. Jan 55 calls. Okay, unusual. Like I said, you don't even see call buying. The stock is under 40. 55s are over 15 bucks out of the money. All right? So, you know, that's the first day. Catches an unusual buyer. Maybe, you know, you say to yourself, wow, what's this guy doing? You know, a couple of us were talking in the room. What kind of play is that? So, you know, we're saying maybe, you know, it's a hedge against um, a short squeeze. Maybe they short the name. They're worried about a squeeze, blah, blah, blah. Who knows? You know, it's, it's one bet. You can't make a big deal out of it. The very next day, the very next day, the stock is weak again, testing the lows. And he comes back and buys more of the Jan 55 calls. So now you say to yourself, all right. You know, one, a hedge, maybe you get lucky. Two, this stock looks like it's ready to break lows. 
and this guy comes and adds even more to these Jan 55s. So, you know, a couple guys took a swing on the name. It piqued their interest for good reason. He nailed the lows. He nailed the absolute lows. That's a beautiful thing when you see that. All right? You get this move and news, mind you. Okay, I don't know if you guys remember. A couple of us were, like, getting crazy about it on Twitter because it caught news. We couldn't believe that this Jan 55 call by a court news. And he already scored on, on those calls, okay? Um, make a long story short, he still has them. And look at this move. Then it goes quiet and dead here. And now look at this grind higher with the rest of the auto names. So now those 55 calls that were 15 plus out of the money, the stock's 53. They're two bucks out of the money. Yeah, you think? Inside, no, who knows? Inside, inside of trading, yeah, because you caught this news, right? I mean, obviously, he had to have a heads up on it. He had to. If he didn't catch that news, you would say maybe he was just making a bet on the turnaround. But, you know, we found this strange that why would he pick the $55 strikes? Like, to me, you know, that out-of-the-money stuff, it doesn't get me as excited because it's it's lotto speculation. But if you're going to keep coming after something, like, where did he get that $55 number? He must have had confidence behind that number, right? Why go so far, far out of the money? Now, it had time behind it. So it makes it a little bit different. You know, if you see a month out and they're 15 bucks out of the money, that's pure speculation. Or insider trading. But he went out to Jan's, so, you know, he did have enough time behind it. But uh, just another one of these auto names I had to bring up to you. You probably heard me mention it in the past. Um, and this thing was up nicely on Friday again. Uh, and this is, I think, one of the groups a lot of us have regrets about because there was flow. There was legitimate flow in these groups. We just, again, we, we, that's the problem when you try to figure out the catalyst. You know, we didn't know why the names like this would catch flow at a left field looking like this. You know, the first thing that comes to mind are shorts hedging. But again, if they're aggressively coming after something, you really shouldn't even rack your brain over that. Okay? Because if they're hedging a short or putting on a bullish position, if they're aggressively doing it, they're concerned about upside, right? They're stressing urgency and concern about upside. And, you know, that's the way you got to look at these things. Again, one order can mean anything. But when they keep coming, it can only mean one thing. Uh, and, yeah, Jim is mentioning the hurricanes and the flooding help. But, Jim, how, you're telling me could they have anticipated, oh, we're going into hurricane season and there was a probability of that happening? Like, that's, that's far-fetched, no? I mean, maybe, you know, these guys are sharp. Maybe that was part of the equation, you know. And because Jim is saying the hurricane, the flooding, that's been the catalyst recently. That's why these things have gotten hot. You know, that's been an added catalyst here. Um, <laughs> Matt saying insider uh, trading weather control. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, it's comedy. But this is a beautiful thing when you see things like this. I, I just... You know, I love stuff like that. I love stuff like that. Um, and that's it. So my point of the story here, I want to stress that you have a lot of stuff where the, you know, the quality stuff, the quality action, and I'm not trying to pat myself or flow on the back. They've really done well. They've really done well, okay? And when you see that, you know, you have to take notice and say to yourself, all right, let me try to be a little more selective here. Uh, the market is, you know, a bit stretched, okay? But don't get bearish, okay? Because the thing is, is again, the rotation comes to the rescue, rescue constantly. And I'll, I'll tell you one thing I'm noticing, okay? We've seen rotation, um, like I said, out of fang into some things. You know what was another hot group? The banks, right? You remember we were talking about the bank, that December call buying in Bank of America? Remember the December 25 calls, how much they bought? There was that one day that that sweeper 
whether it's a fund or an individual, who knows. But that one sweeper accumulated over 130,000 December 25 calls in this BAC. Let me repeat that. 130,000 over the course of two days. All right, and BAC is a name that could catch action. So you really need to see size to be impressed in Bank of America. Because Bank of America is a magnet to option activity. But that's a whole lot of Bank of America calls. I mean, I, it doesn't even do it justice. Like, let me show you something. This is the facet. There is nothing, nothing better than Bank of America call buying when the banks are hot. Watch this. I don't even have to put calls. I could put anything here because there was nothing but calls. Watch this. So we're, look when it started heating up. I mean, laundry list. This is September 13th. Okay. So you, you look at this move here. And she started roughly. I got to move so many things out of the way. What? You, you talk about it September what? What day is this? September 7th. I can't, can't find myself. You know, so this action started prior to that move. Like prior, they started coming in. But then look at this here. This is, is this the day? This, oh no, this is not the day. Look at this, a million and a half here. You know, I think, is this the day? Where are those Decembers? Here they are. Here they are. Look at this guy. December, what is this? Facebook stuff. December 25 calls, $1.9 million sweep there. December 25 calls, another 144 grand. Yeah, they just kept adding, adding them up. December, another, uh, look at this guy. This guy was a beauty too. April, you know, further out, but uh, half a million. December 25 calls, the next day, the next day, 845 grand. So you saw some big time action in the banks. How about this? JP Morgan, I think, had the best looking sweep out of all the bank sweepers. And it's a while now. Where is it? Let me pull up just calls. Maybe I can find it quicker. Oh, it's right in front of my face. Here it is. Can you guys see this bet here? See this one right here? So this is the end of August. He he was a bit underwater. I think it had a lift and then it pulled. Um, initially, but he went out to March, okay, and that's the beauty of that. He went out to March, okay. So you're probably saying, why is it such a big deal? March calls a million dollar sweeper. You see the two lightning bolts there. This order hit every possible exchange to get filled. Fifteen different exchanges he swept in milliseconds to put on this position. That's how aggressive this order was. Okay, so even though they're March, he wanted to own this thing as fast as possible and as much as possible in one swoosh. So when you see stuff like that, okay, and again, the time becomes a little bit of a problem because you see March, but you always have to take notice on orders like that. You always do. And then you st and then you get the Bank of America flow after that, the Citigroup flow, Morgan Stanley, a name that really doesn't catch flow, was catching flow. How about this? How about this? I got one even better. Oh no, what did I do? Hold on. I got one even better for you guys. Okay, one that nobody, nobody would want to play, and I was begging people, begging, looking inside, begging, to put some away in their accounts and forget about it, okay? But it was so hard to do, and you'll see. Wells Fargo, all right? Right here, you see this? Again, I, you probably saw me post this on Twitter. On 9-7, okay, September 7th, and that's when everything started to heat up in the banks. June 55 calls, he tattooed. Swept multiple exchanges, very similar to the J.P. Morgan bet. Over $2 million it ended up being worth of the June 55 calls when the stock was 49 and change, okay? And you want to know 
where the spot was on the chart and why it was so difficult. Look at it. You know Wells Fargo, right? In the news, disaster. People should be in cuffs. Kramer bashing it left and right on CNBC, drilling it in your head. See this here? Into the teeth of the sell-off, into the blood, this guy fires off those June missiles. That day, right here, 9-7. Into the lows. That's all she wrote. Yeah, you're right, Jim Buffett. And but you see, like if you're if you're solely on the like I, I I stress to you guys a lot that when you combine the flow with the what you do, most likely it's technicals or something to, of that caliber. Um, you know, you find success. I've seen a lot of people find success with that. But then you have action where you have to take notice. In other words, sweepers trump, in my opinion, everything. Okay, the smart money, the short money out there, they're the ones that are making these charts. You know what I'm saying? Like, WFC may eventually look good on a chart, and it was thanks to this sweeper. So when you see somebody come in, and that's that divergence I stress, come in and fire off missiles into a name that nobody wants to touch, into the teeth of a sell-off where you need a pair of coconuts, you have to take notice. So now you'd be sitting pretty. You'll have you'd, you'd be in let's say June calls with cushion. You know you could take some risk off, roll them, do whatever you like. You know you could, and you know I've been getting the uh, the response a lot that buying time it's not worth it, and I think that's a foolish approach to take. Because just because you didn't need time here, that didn't mean it wasn't worth it. You didn't know this was going to happen. You know, even my impression was this thing will probably flush lows, you know, get people scared again, bounce back, flush lows, bounce around the lows for a bit. But then you turn your head two months from now and this thing's 60. You know, I didn't think this was going to happen. So you 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 want to be covered. You want to pay for time, and if you don't need it, even better. You know, and a lot of people have been getting that response on this CVE from a lot of members saying that, you know, they don't think it was worth it. It was a lot of agony. They were underwater. Meanwhile, they're selling those calls for an eighty percent profit, and they're talking about how it wasn't worth it. How wasn't that worth it? What, you sat in some calls underwater for two months and you saw 80% return? That's not worth it? You know, so the CVE, you guys remember, they started buying the living daylights out of this flush and it just kept selling right in their face. Remember, it broke new lows and went even lower. Okay? And, you know, they're out in December. So now, again, this is what I thought Wells Fargo might look like, right? Bounce around the lows, lift, come back down, test, and lift. Wells Fargo was the opposite. Just they nailed the lows, it bounced like a spoiled dean. But this sometimes you see this. But who cares? You know, again, that's the approach. You put in what you're willing to lose. You're looking for some nice upside. Okay, you obviously you're not flipping them, you're not scalping them. If you're buying time, you're not looking to do that. But you also have the cushion and, and stress-free where you don't have to say to yourself, do I stop myself out? Do I stop myself out? You know, that, that'll drive you nuts. So I think it's not worth it if you did stress yourself out. And you shouldn't have if you did what you were supposed to do and play the December calls. You know, like I said, I think um, somebody mentioned to me, I think it was like 50 cents to um, a buck 25 or something like that. I forget where, what returns um, they saw on those calls, but, you know, it was well worth it. You know, so now just going back to the banks again, K 
Can they go higher? Of course they can, but you just want to be careful now up here, right? We want to see, and we're seeing it now. We're seeing a little breather here, okay? And maybe the action will heat up again, but you got to you gotta take into account, again, 9.7, that's when things really start to heat up, and, you know, you're buying a little late in the move. And in the past, if you bought a little late in the move, um, there was always, you know, some consolidation, a little bit of a pullback here, you know, there was a little longer pullback. So you've just got to take that, take that into account um, with the financials and the flow from this point on. And if you missed it, okay, if you missed it, there will be other groups, okay, there will be other sectors that will start up the same way. Just make sure you're ready to fire when that comes around. Um, so the one sector, by the way, well, you got a couple of them now, but a lot of sectors going into last week were really overheated, okay? And the one sector right now that is not overheated, it's floating around neutral, but thanks to Friday um, is now below neutral, is tech. Okay, now, not semis, but tech. And I find interest in that. You guys, uh, I don't know if you remember mention, me mentioning, we were seeing that in the semis before that recent little spike to highs. Even though the semis were looking good, sentiment was pretty awful there, which didn't make sense. You know, and then you got a nice push to highs. So going into next week, I think tech is a group um, we got to keep an eye out for. Now, what I'm hoping for, it's the underbelly of tech. You know, because thing they're coming out of um, and stuff like that they're coming out of, maybe they start to hit up some names that really didn't see much of a lift. Remember, a lot of people and pundits were saying that uh, the only thing going harder is Fang. That's it. If it wasn't for Fang, this market would be dead. Maybe we start to see the opposite of that happen. And what do you think is going to happen to the market if that happens? You know what I mean? Just because Fang's not going higher, you think the market's going to cave in if money's pouring into these other groups? So something to keep an eye out for, um, you know, in the week ahead. So, again, that's that's why I stress you'd rather be late to the bearish party than early all the time. I mean, for me, it takes a lot for me to get bearish. And, yeah, that usually is not happening at a top. But I don't care because I'm ready to fire on each or a better way to put it is I'm willing to get aggressive, even as a day trader, off every consolidation because I don't allow myself to get bearish. And honestly, the flow hasn't hinted anything bearish in quite a while. You, you guys probably heard me mention, as far as flow, you never get a bell ringing at the top saying, okay, party's over, music stops. What happens is, is you see a gradual shift to where not only put sweepers start to grab the ball and get aggressive, but a lack of buying. Like for you guys who are members, when you hear me on the audio saying, um, wow, man, they're not buying shit, and you hear that consistently throughout the week, that's a red flag. You know, when you, tell, when you hear me say, what, coal sweepers don't have an interest in much. That's a red flag. Now, again, that could happen a day, right? That could happen over the course of um, a day or throughout the day. I'm talking about over the course of days. You see a pattern of that developing where they're not looking to get aggressive call side, and you see put sweepers start to grab the ball. That could give us a hint that momentum is heading south. And honestly, there's been, you can count on one hand, Literally, on one hand, since the election that put sweepers have grabbed the ball for the day, for the day. Um, I remember when we had the, the, a little pullback. When was it? It was one of these pullbacks. It might have been here. And we saw some real put action start to get aggressive. Okay. And then you saw a little bit of coal buying at the lows. You had this rally, and then put sweepers got aggressive here. But then what happened was 
here, that's when the buying started up again. You know what I mean? So you had these small little periods, but not consistently, since the election. The last time the flow really started to change was pre-election. Let me see if I could go back and show you. Yeah, so you're looking like right here. But again, ultimately set up the one of the best bottoms ever, ever, in my opinion. So right here, we had this rally. Let me do this so I could highlight. We had this rally here, strong rally, ton of call activity out of that rally. Then things got toppy, right? And what we started seeing, the market still was going higher, but what we started seeing was a lack of call buying, a lack of quality of call buying. And the market didn't pull. It was still hanging in there. And then you had a pull. And then the buying still wasn't there. And then put sweeper started to grab the ball into this. Okay, but right here, I remember like it was yesterday, the flow started to turn bullish again, right here. And the market continued to push lower. You guys heard me say this over and over. So the market still had two days of downside after the flow started to turn. The first time we started seeing VXX, UVXY put sweepers, we were seeing call sweepers throughout. We started seeing put sweepers right here. The market continued to go lower, but then... We got a squeeze, that was before the election, and then after the election, the futures crashed and then rebounded before you even woke up in the morning. So that was the last period where the flow turned for the worst. We haven't seen much of anything close to that um, since then. So that's, that's why I can't really, you know, I don't allow myself to get bearish um, just because, you know, We've gone too far in the sense. I'll get a little cautious, right? You got to take account we've rallied. You know, obviously the risk reward up here is not as good as down here and all that jazz, but you don't want to get bearish. That's a completely different thing. Being cautious, being bearish is two different things. All right, yeah, the solars, you know, had a nice move. First, solar actually caught the news um, of the verdict. Uh, so you had that in the way, uh, but there's been there's been some interesting groups. There's been some interesting groups. All right, let me get to a couple of questions as far as names are concerned. Um, I know a lot of you love trading the high beta names, um, and you know we kind of spoke about that a little bit. Uh, but fire up some names to me if you haven't already, and we'll look at uh, some charts together. Uh, EFX. Interesting. EFX, there was, you got kind of a mixed bag there, and there's a lot of noise, meaning a lot of news around it, a lot of action around it, but here's the story, what's going on. We've been seeing shorter term put buying, but Jan call buying. Now, if you're probably saying, what the hell does that mean? I mean, the way to interpret it is they're worried about the short term as far as downside, where they're protecting against the short-term downside, but ultimately they think, you know, a couple months out, they can see higher prices, okay? It hasn't been any super aggressive buying, okay? It's just been cl clean buying, period, uh, but Jan's is where the focus is. Nothing shorter term. I know uh, there was a squeeze there. Uh, there was nothing in flow that really signaled that, uh, besides some, again, Jan call money. So that's the way they're playing it. They're protecting the, the shorter-term downside and uh, looking for higher prices a little further out. Uh, Facebook, yeah, Facebook's had some flows. As a matter of fact, uh, Facebook Friday, just as Friday, and um, had a nice little push and then sold off, uh, like most of the fan games. Jans, they went out to Jans. So a bit, you know, a bit of time, I guess you could say, on them, which makes sense. Um, but bullish flow, there was actually a good, pretty good looking sweep of Jans. Nothing really, no real standout any closer in as far as time. 
you know, Jen, um, that's probably the only sweep I can remember in Facebook uh, that was somewhat good looking. I traded Facebook the day before. I'll show you what I did. I think yeah, it was a Wednesday or Thursday. We had a nice little lift in Facebook, but then that faded as well. I think it was this year. And it was one of these days. Um, it was a decent size. I posted it on my on my Twitter as well. Uh, weekly player. Uh, so the stock ran like a, a little light buck and change, something like that, and then ultimately faded. Uh, but that's the only action I I saw in uh, Facebook this week. So you had some decent looking Jan sweeper activity and weeklies that expired um, last week. All right, I'm getting a couple questions on win. Win's a tough one for me. I love win. The sweepers are in win. When you see sweepers in win, especially initial activity, there's no reason to even think about it, really. Especially off a of pulp. They're known, and you guys probably know this already, they tattooed this pullback. You guys remember that, okay? And as a matter of fact, I remember, I think, December. There were two December missiles into this consolidation pullback. The problem now with Win is you had this lift here, you know? So maybe we get some consolidation here. Maybe we get something uh, similar to this. You know, maybe not as long as this, but maybe similar to this. And ideally, you know, the ideal situation, you want the flow to get quiet and then heat up again. And that would be your cue um, to start looking. But, you know, again, I'm not trying to blow you off. Off a lift like this, Adam, um, it becomes a little more difficult. I like it when it comes into consolidation or pullback. Here's what you can look for flow-wise too, Adam, and win for a trade. Now, this is just a trade, you know, quick trade. Um, let's say we get Tuesday. There's a flush and win. Let's say Macau, you know, it's happened, right? And the stock's down uh, $2 over the course of a day or two, and you see some sweeper activity come into that. Um, you got a trade there for a bounce. But in my opinion, that's just a trade. Okay, unless you're using it in addition to something else you're seeing on your end. So in other words, in English, that would mean um, you want to get long win. You think win has a bullish, extremely bullish Elliott Waves pattern or technical pattern. Um, you're just not sure of the entry. I would look for a day of weakness that catches sweeper activity as confirmation. And why would I do that, you say? One, I know several people who utilize that and have a tremendous amount of success. That's one. Two, that stresses to you that your thesis is in play. In other words, if sweepers are supporting the weakness, okay, they're adding support to any potential downside there. They're willing to buy the weakness there. And that's your cue, if you like it on your end, to fire. All right, so for me, though, just to fire up here based on all the action Win has caught, yeah. Okay, why can't you get caught in the pull there? It, it really has no relevance. So that, that's the way I look at it. There's no edge off the flow right now in Win. Uh, Brent's asking, what do I think about the volume in EAT? Yeah, EAT caught a block. It wasn't a sweep. Uh, you guys know I have a sweeper fetish, so not to say blocks should be ignored at all times, um, but I'd be more impressed if they swept this name now. So in other words, for me, again, unless it's a name you're eyeing already and you use it as confirmation for an entry, I would wait to see, even if they're smaller, some sort of sweeper activity to confirm this thing there's a high probability of momentum coming. Um, but I will say there's been both sweeper and block call buying in a lot of these names, and they've done well. Uh, one in particular, I don't know, again, if it's the same or whatever, but I'll just give you some examples. Cake, um, 
there was some unusual buying in cake. And, you know, had a nice little lift. Nothing crazy yet, but the calls moved nicely. Uh, Buffalo Wild Wings was a nice quick trade of some buying there. Yeah, so there's been some interest in these names. All right, but that's that's what I would take uh, from the E. Unusual call activity. And I would just, for me, I would need sweepers to confirm that for this name. Unless, again, unless you see something on your end. You know, I, I, again, I'm a big, I'm a big proponent of that if you're having success. In other words, if you're finding some success looking at technicals, okay, for me, I found, I wouldn't say no, I, I didn't find success. I didn't find any consistency looking at technicals. Okay, I tried everything out there. For me, technicals got me in trouble more than they helped me. I'm not going to lie to you. Okay, but I know a lot of people who trade off technicals and find success. Okay, so if you do, then you should use the flow as confirmation of that. It's only going to make you a better trader. Only. You know, so you shouldn't uh, frown upon utilizing that if you, again, have found some success doing it. If you haven't, then my recommendation would be to trade off just the quality flow. You're going to have less names to select from, right? So meaning IGT, Fold, Yandanks, that sort of thing. You know what I mean? AMD. Eat wouldn't be in that category. But if Monday we come in, Eat catches some sweeper activity, even on the smaller scale, uh, that would that would set up a nice strong signal there. Uh, Tomer, what's up, buddy? Hey, Jay, how do you interpret flow like we saw yesterday? Short-term calls in a name, Apple, together with short-term calls in VXX. That's a good question, Tomer. And that's where um, you got to say to yourself, you know, you try to put the pieces of the, of the puzzle together, but sometimes you just got to acknowledge that we're not watching just one individual, right? We're not watching just one group. We're basically focusing solely on aggressive activity. That's what we're trying to focus on. Okay. So Tom is saying we're seeing some VXX call buying, and then we'll see some bullish flow in names, and you know that's two sides of the coin there. All right. But at the same time, that's not a bad strategy when you think about it, right? So we saw some VXX call buying, and you look at VXX, and by the way, I VXX is a disaster, by the way, but, you know, you can hedge with puts and, and other things, but, I mean, there are people who like to do it, okay? So you see some VXX call buying, and you look at VXX, and it's playing dead on the concrete pavement, right? So if you're looking to get long, or you have some long exposure, and your biggest concern is not about some consolidation, but of some flash crash or some vicious pull that this market's overdue for, it makes sense. It makes sense. And we've been seeing, um, and we saw some of that this past week. That's what Tomer's pointing out. Like, we're seeing call buying, but at the same time, we see a VXX sweeper fly in. And in my opinion, again, I'm guessing, but based on what I've seen in the past, and I've seen that in the past, when you have a market like this and volatility like this, a lot of times they're just trying to hedge their long exposure against some exogenous event. That's what they're worried about. They're not, they're not concerned, Tomer, about, I would say, not even this per se, not even a, a little consolidation poll like this. When they're playing VXX call side, they're worried, or not worried, they're protecting against that flash crash. Hey, God forbid North Korea fires a nuke. <laughs> I mean, not, not a nuke, but fires, you know what I'm saying, that hydrogen bomb into the air or, or whatever ridiculous thing that makes its way from time to time into the market. I mean, listen, 9-11, right? These things happen. So 
you know, there's smart money out there when they're long. If you're long, your portfolio's long and a little too much maybe for your liking, but you have to be long right now, you sweep VXX calls. So I don't know if that answers your question, um, Tomer, but that's basically what they do. And like the spy puts, like Tomer saying we see spy puts as well from time to time. Again, that could be just protection. You know, not everything is a bet. Remember when I say one order really doesn't mean much, one bet. It really, it's hard to get a feel off one order. You know, so Tomer, to answer your question there on the spy puts, you see one spy book sporadically come in and hit the board. Yeah, that, you shouldn't really, I'm not going to say ignore it, but you shouldn't really, it shouldn't signal anything notable to you. If we start seeing a flurry of spy put buying coming in throughout the day, I don't know if you remember, the one day we had that pullback, I think um, Coley was going to testify, it was nonsense, news like that. We saw a wave of spy IWM put buying come in that morning. And then the market rolled over that afternoon. So you, you know what I mean? It wasn't one order. It was a period of, of spy put buying. So that could signal to you that the momentum might be heading south over the short term. But, you know, protection, um, buying VXX, where it is now, is totally normal considering where we are as in the market as a whole again as a whole big picture and where v, where volatility is okay and listen we all know it when that vol short vol trade unravels it's going to be some ugly shit out there i mean come on we don't have to be sh sharp to know that and there's going to be a period in time it happens right we can all agree on that but timing's everything. And you know, you don't want to be totally positioned for that because you can go broke doing that. But if you're long and you're a little uncomfortable with how long you are right now, the best way to combat that is buy some spy puts. Right, so Tom was saying so. It doesn't change my game plan as a day trader. No, 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 no. For Monday, no, Tomer. Exactly, hit the nail on the head. Doesn't doesn't change. For me as a day trader, Tomer, it's simple. I go into the day and the flow is my guide. Okay, so if the board lights up red and there's no call sweeper activity out there, I'm sitting on my hands. Okay, even if a call buyer pops up in the midst of the sea of red on the board, I'm most likely still going to sit on my hands until that flow changes. You know, so I'm looking at the total pattern. You know? And again, the lack of buying, Tomer, I'm telling you, is something um, that you're going to realize is more important even than the other stuff. Because, like, for example, even when we see that spy put buying come in in a wave, it, it just means that the momentum for that day, for the short term, is to the downside. It means nothing a week out or anything like that. You know, the lack of call buying has been a stronger signal for me beyond that, both the intraday and beyond that. So when they're not looking to get aggressive call side, that's a warning signal in itself. We haven't seen that. We, I've seen that many a times, many a times. We saw that um, for a lengthy period before the Bazooka Jolos, as we like to call them, back in 2016. The end of 2015, when everybody was getting ready for that Santa Christmas rally, there was no call sweeper activity, nothing. It was ridiculous. And then the market ultimately rolled over hard. So you're going to realize that the lack of call sweeper activity uh, the lack of quality out there is going to be more concerning, a lot more concerning than sporadic put buying here and there. That's totally normal. And trust me, you'll know, Tomer, you don't even see like now you're, you're trying to figure it out. You'll, it's going to be obvious when put sweepers have the ball. You're not going to be like, 
oh man, is there some put buying out there? You, you're not gonna, you're not gonna have that approach. You're gonna be like, oh shit, they're tattooing puts here. You know what I mean? You're gonna have that emotion. It's gonna be, it's gonna slap you in the face, just like the coal mine does. All right, when they get um, really bulled up, you know, we see it all too many times now. But when they get really bulled up, um, it's obvious. You don't have to try to, you don't have to be a flow aficionado to figure it out. Uh, a good example, I'll give you an example on, um, for a stretch on Friday. Now, it's become less and less of a signal of late because the market just seems to go up every day. But, like, the market was um, soft on Friday, right? But look at what happens here. Like, you, you see, this is what Tom was talking about, the sporadic put buying. You see one order here and there. Right? You don't see the board's predominantly green. Um, but you can see as the day gone on here, right? Look, now no red on the board here, to the right screen here, if you can see. So, you know, a put buy here and there, so still leaning bullish. But then as you go on throughout the day, the board just now is just all lit up in green. Yeah, you know, a lot of times if there's weakness, that tells you, of how the smart money is positioning into that weakness. You know, and a lot of times you can make a trade on it. Like I said, less so in recent days because this market goes up every day. But as a day trader, if I can pull up a chart here, I'll show you what I'm talking about as far as the trade and where the board sentiment-wise helps out. What's going on here? Um, but... You know, the market chopping around, right, throughout the day. And then you saw as the flow, as that board was just crystal clear green, you know, look at what the market started to do under the hood. And then, as usual, rip into the bell, you know. So that's where flow, you can get a gauge on sentiment. Uh, what Tomer's trying to make the point on is these put buyers, sentiment-wise, really don't do much for me. If this board, you see this all green? If this is all red, and even if the market's not selling yet, if this is all red, that's concern for me intraday, Tomer. Yeah, yeah, initial initial flow in names. I should make that clear, though. Initial flow in names in in ETFs, like what's in other words, what's initial flow in VXX? We see V like right now there's no pattern per se in VXX. We see call buying, we see put buying, spy. Is there any pattern in spy? Sometimes we see some call buying, sometimes we see some put buying. So in other words, you want to see you want to have confirmation that the flow has turned. So if we come in Monday, Tomer, and we see more of that. You understand? Then that can turn into a signal. You know, Tuesday rolls around, we see more of that. You know, it's again, it's with the ETFs especially, it's not one order because they catch so much action. You know, I give you the example of the election, right? And it wasn't the one coal buyer that got our attention into the weakness where the flow turned. In other words, back here, there was all put sweeper activity, the total opposite of what we've been seeing now. Put sweepers, put sweepers, put sweepers, put sweepers, all day long, no coal buying, okay? And then here, like I said, we saw, for the first time, one VXX put sweeper, okay? All right, that's one. Then UVXY put sweeper. Then another VXX put sweeper. Then, instead of IWM put buying, IWM call sweeper. You understand? So it wasn't one order. It was the pattern of buying, the pattern of flow that changed. It becomes, and like I said, it becomes obvious. Trust me, it becomes obvious where you say to yourself, wow, they're, they're really starting to buy stuff right now. Or they're really leaning on puts right now. That's where you sense something different going on. We don't have that sense yet, you know, because there's a VXX put, um, call wire. 
late Friday or whatever. We don't we didn't have that sense. You know, going into the weekend with North Korea and all, why not? That's totally normal. And we've seen it plenty of times. That's nothing. Uh, Bob is asking about Apple. Apple is a little tricky for me because there's a lot of noise around it, Bob. You know, everybody and their mother wants to trade Apple. You got bulls, you got bears, you got this, you got that. Um, uh, we saw some buying in on Friday. Let me see. I'll get you Friday's buying. What line? They were buying one line in Friday. Here it is. So you had some put buying early, but this was the line, 929, was this, oh here, the 148s, the in the money calls they started buying. Uh, that was around noon. So you had some bullish activity come in Friday um, into the weakness, but Apple, you know, is going to see some call buying almost every day. Yeah, but again, this was the action that came into uh, the weakness after there was some put buying. Even the day before there was call buying uh, that got run over. December's nothing much there, though. You know, Apple's tricky here. In my opinion, Apple's tricky here because you have a lot of a lot of hands in there. You know, a lot of hands in there. But like I said. Some guys traded it in the room um, off that size in the money call buying that came in because uh, they wanted to buy Apple, thinking it came in too much, too quick for a trade. But Apple, what you want, for me, I want to see Apple eventually find a bottom and go dead, go quiet for a bit. And then call sweeper activity really start to pick up. That's what I would want to see. You know, we, we spoke about this, right, with the, with the apples. Well, eventually, something like this comes, and that's why I have such a tough time, no matter how much flow we see, getting bullish on a name that, late, that long in the tooth. I just can't do it. And a lot of them continue to go higher. I know it. I know. So it looks foolish. But ultimately, you know this is coming, and you have to say to yourself, risk-reward-wise, is it worth it? Am I looking for more than this, willing to risk getting caught in something like this? So now this is good that this has come in, um, but you want to see it chill out a little bit. You know what I mean? Rally, come back down, bounce around. Um, the longer the better. The flow go dead. A lot of times that can happen. Right now it's so active. It's so active. There's so much options activity in Apple right now. It's crazy. You know, it's a widely held name. Uh, Young is saying Oracle. Oracle, we've seen uh, some mixed action. I think Friday had a little bit of bullish flow. You had earnings there, right, uh, Young, on that Oracle? Maybe that's why we saw some mixed flow, I would say. Yeah. Um, we saw a little bit of buying poke up. I think it was Friday. A little bit. So I would definitely keep my eyes uh, open to action here. Like I said, a lot better to start looking for action down here than up here. Again, that's that's the problem, Mary. You know. Yeah. So young, if if you if you played, if you took the prudent approach, and you owned it and took some profit off before earnings or waited, hoping for something like this off earnings. You did the right thing, and it set up nice for you. So now I would look for action to heat up here. Oracle could catch action, too. Oracle could catch some action. Uh, Len saying, two things if you get a chance. What do you look for that tells you a particular sweep as you call it stock replacement? Oh, good question, Leonard. Sweepers rarely replace stock. That's why I love sweepers. Sometimes, once in a blue moon, but very rare. Blocks, negotiated blocks, replace stock. So that's one. If you see sweeper activity, uh, nine out of ten times, it's clean. Okay? The big blocks, especially now more than ever, there's a lot of stock replacement going on. 
I would say seven out of ten size blocks are stock replacement. How about that? That's a pretty crazy number. So you and the way I know, here's the easiest way, Leonard, for you to know. Okay. If you see a block go off, just simply on the chart. So you see an order, but you see a huge block. I'm not talking about the market maker hedge that we see off the order. I'm talking about a big block. You'll see like a hundred thousand plus or something like that. That's um, the first clue of stock replacement. Me, I have technology that does that for me. Uh, so that's how I know if you're asking that. But if you're asking how would you know the easiest way, uh, that's the easiest way. Just look at the tape or look at time of sales and you'll see a big block of equity go up. And I'll stick out like a sore thumb. I'll look like this, basically, you know, on an, on an intraday chart. But, yeah, Leonard, it, it never used to be that much. But um, now more than ever, uh, based on volatility being cheap, you know, calls being cheap, uh, there's a lot of stock replacement going on. And if you think about it, okay, again, you guys got to understand, the smart money, they, they don't fear just some sort of me measly pullback consolidation. You know, that, that's a good thing. Nobody's worried about that. Everybody's worried about some sort of flash crash, okay, something with velocity behind it. That's what people are concerned about. You know, big traders, money managers, that's what they're trying to protect against. And you have to be. You know, if you're managing a lot of money and you can't be as nimble as we are, you have to protect against that. But even if you're nimble, if it's some sort of flash crash, you can get caught. Okay, so don't think that can't happen. I'm not trying to spook anybody. All right, but it's very possible. And what these big guys like to do, instead of, you know, let's say they have a ton of Oracle, okay, what they want to do is instead of, you know, they, they sell 500,000 shares of the equity, and they replace it with $2 million worth of calls. So they have less principal at risk. It's almost like a stop loss, right? A half a million shares times 50 is how much money at risk. And now you have upside exposure on a $2 million bet. Now, you can lose all $2 million, but you're okay with that because you'll still have exposure to the upside. And if you get caught in some sort of flash crash, you know, that's the most you're going to lose on it. So that's why we're seeing a lot of that go on. And there is a lot of it going on. It's really a pain in the ass. Um, but mostly, mostly blocks. The blocks have a lot to do with it. A lot of times those um, stock replacement trades come in in blocks. Bull risk, bull risk reversal, stuff like that. Uh, Jim is saying, take a look at PXD. I was looking at PXD all week, Jim. I love the leap sweeper activity in this PXD. Love it, love it, love it. Love it. Absolutely love it. And on top of the action that we already saw in this PXD, um, you know, gravy. Now, again, had a nice move here. If you remember, um, they were buying um, in this pull here off this big washout, if you guys remember that. They were underwater. Um, I think they had November, Decembers. Uh, so they got some time left there, really starting to move nicely. And this past week, um, I think it was the week prior and more this week, Jan 2019, calls okay and you're probably saying Jan 2019 what the hell am I gonna do with that let me tell you something those leap sweepers are money they really are the problem is the timing again the timing but they are money you talk about making hits you look back three four months I'm not talking about two years three four months and what a name has done off a leap sweep of boggle your mind. 
All right, and we were talking, if you guys remember, when we started this sweep series, we were talking about energy, right? How difficult it is. And, you know, we all agree, the only way you can play these then, right, because it was so tough, was with time. And you could see how that would have helped out drastically here, right? You would have been underwater. It would have been a pain in the ass, whatever the case may be. But right now, you would have been sitting pretty. Okay? And if you even take, had taken the approach to add, you know, over the course of time, not all in one shot, if that's what you wanted to do, it would have been even better because you would have got better levels of entry. Because a lot of that stuff, even the quality action got run over because of what was going on in crude at the time. Uh, but now you look at some of these things and, you know, they're really, they're really starting to gather some steam here. Uh, we saw some activity. I traded a couple of energy names. It was no big deal flow-wise, but uh, just because I felt good about the momentum in them. APC, uh, they announced a uh, huge buyback. That thing really had a nice move this, last week. Um, COP. COP is a mover, too. Had a really big move. Look at this. Um, and there, there, were, there were a couple of days of flow in COP last week where you could have, uh, again, day trading was, got a nice push out of it. I day traded it Friday as well. Uh, you know what's a, another trade, guys, that I like in um, times where you're worried about a market pull or things are a little too hot, too juicy? I like those quick turnover trades, especially if you're an equities player. It's amazing how... There's no equity players anymore. Nobody plays stocks. Everybody plays options. But I'll give you an example, okay, of certain trades that I like because there's not a lot of time behind them. Watch. STX. Now, I don't know if you guys who are members um, follow this one. So STX, you had um, weekly sweeper activity come in here. They expire at the end of the week. Okay, here. Uh, a lot of us day traded that day. We got a nice little push out of it. Closed well off the high, as you can see. Okay? But it's a name to keep on your radar now, right? Because somebody, again, these are some of the under-the-radar names. This is not an Apple, a Facebook, uh, you know, active name. Uh, these are under-the-radar names. STX, now this name should be on your screen because... Somebody out there was aggressively speculating on weeklies. There's only three days left in the week. So if he's going to catch something, he's got to catch it now, right? Whether it's news, a move in the stock, whatever it may be, he's got to catch it over the next couple of days. And the less time you're in something, the less risk there is, okay? So this is something in the room we kept an eye on. I know me and GJT, a lot of you guys know in the room. Um traded this thing several times last week because it called weekly sweepers here, okay? Quiet there, weekly sweepers here, and then Friday morning, a little more weekly sweeper activity, and then they rolled them out to next week at the end of the day. So you're probably saying, well, big, de big deal, Jesus. What are you talking about here? I mean, you're talking about a move from 32 to 33 and a half over the course of a couple days. You know, so just little things like that. And sometimes you'll see that, uh, let's say, you know, they come in on a Friday and they're playing weekly for the following week. You get that bump, you know, early that next week, Monday, Tuesday. Some, a lot of times they catch an upgrade. You know what I mean? And you can sell into that. Again, not always a home run per se, um, but you get, especially on the equity it's a low-risk trade, in my opinion. Yeah, you, know, you put a stop loss like you would do anything else and stuff like that. Uh, the problem is with the weeklies, you're not going to size up in weeklies because then if you size up and nothing happens, you can lose a decent amount of money. So you can play it small in the weeklies um, and, and catch a move. You just you can't get too greedy. You know, a lot of times these options will move, you know, 30, 40, 50%, and you got to be willing to take that. 
Uh, but just something I wanted to mention, and they come in in small sweeps under the radar, uh, but they've been they've been doing well. They've been doing well. Uh, you know, if you guys remember, I haven't really followed it of late because we traded in a WG. Oh my God, Winnebago! You guys remember this name in the room? All right, this was a name. This was perfect. This Winnebago was absolutely perfect. Okay, here's what went on. They came in. And again, this thing is a little extended too, but they came in on a Thursday right before the close. Wasn't a lot of money, but right before the close, they swept weeklies expiring the next day and October's. Okay? So my interpretation was, you know, the weeklies was a lot smaller of a bet. The October's was a nice sweep. So my interpretation was, all right, this dude's bullish, and he thinks there's a possibility that he might catch it tomorrow but he's focused on october's to be on the safe side but he sprinkled in a little weeklies maybe he gets lucky tomorrow so what we did a lot of people just put on you know a position that before the bell that thursday um a lot of us just bought it at the open friday morning okay you know you place your stop you do what you need to do make a long story short friday the stock just grinded up over the course of a morning, 90 cents. Okay, no huge move, but 90 cents, $40 stock, you could have been in and out of. Okay? And then, you know, if you wanted to swing it off the Octobers, you could have swung it off the Octobers and it tacked on another, looks like, what, two and change or so. But, um, you know, so these are just the little trades that, Again, not everything you should be focused on home runs, especially if you're a little uncomfortable, um, the market or names extended and, and stuff like that. You know, if you're an active trader, these are things you could take advantage of. I love these trades. See, in my eyes, and that's why I day trade, the, the, the momentum that sweepers create, the less time you hold these things, the less risk you have. Now, obviously, the less upside you have. Sometimes you'll get lucky and things will explode intraday, like NLNK, right? Sometimes you're looking for these smaller plays, like I just pointed out. Yeah, but they add up. They add up. Now, you know, this NLNK is in enticing to hold, right? It's enticing to hold. You see unusual activity come in. The stock exploded for six points in two days the last time. But... You know, you buy the stock at ten forty, ten dollars and forty cents, and you got a buck in it easy. You could sell all day long here for a buck. What's what's wrong with that? You know, what's wrong with that? A lot of in a lot of traders going for the gusto um, will end up losing money because they're more concerned. Here's the thing: the beauty of this is. You don't need that player who placed that bet to be right. Everybody's so concerned about the bet panning out. You can make money off these things without even worrying about the bet panning out off the momentum. I mean, that's what I do. You know, so I just wanted to throw that in. Um, yeah, like and like Jim's pointing out, a thousand and LNK. A me a thousand shares. You got a thousand a thousand dollars profit intraday in literally ten minutes. You know, like, okay, you take the risk of missing out on the big enchilada. I get it, but you know, money's money. You know, that's that's my my philosophy anyway. You guys know that. I, I'm not afraid to admit it. Uh, a lot of people think it's a bad thing in a sense, but that's a, a, a you know a strategy I feel comfortable with. My big winners are all lucky. I get lucky with my big winners. You know, I look for my singles all day long. I'm like Pete Rose, line drive hitter, and then you know you hang a curveball, I'll go yard on you once in a blue moon. So the singles add up. You know the losses stay small, and once. In a once a couple times a month, you get lucky by accident. 
Uh, CLRRR. Those are two oil names. CLR is an oil name, I think, right, uh, Jim? Let's look at CLR. This thing's a mover, too, the CLR, I remember. I'll take a look at that ALNY, George, in a second. Uh, is that that hot biotech? Because I, I, I think um, that's that hot biotech. But look, this CLR Continental. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Looks interesting. Uh, it saw some action, right, uh, Jim? It saw some action on Friday. This CLR can catch some aggressive activity. I remember uh, once it caught a really nice sweep, uh, size sweeper, and some smaller sweepers followed. Um, but keep an eye on further action in this name, uh, Jim, no doubt, because she can catch action. Um, the one thing I will add to, Jim, though, not, again, not to spook you off, and it, it can stay this way because it's been held underwater for so long. Energy's a bit hot. I haven't seen the uh, COT data. Anybody going to look at the COT data? I haven't looked yet. Anything um, important out of there? Gold, oil? I like to look at that stuff just to get an idea. I'll post it. Um, I'll post it on my Twitter when I look at it. The COT data. Uh, nobody. All right. So yeah, these these energy names. I just want to say that you know they they've been hot. So. What I would like to see is some sort of pause. And then, you know, these things can catch a ton of flow. Let them come after them aggressively off a little bit of a breather, uh, and I think they'll set up a nice leg. It could set up a nice leg. You know, you just you don't want to be caught uh, chasing chasing uh, the highs on the move here. They come a long way. Like this PXD looks incredible to me. Um, hopefully you could get a little bit of this. You know, a little bit of this here. You know, you can see, I don't know if you guys can make that out on the bottom of the screen. Some stuff I look at, again, it's not magic, um, but just sentiment stuff and stuff like that. When you get this up to here, you know, you see all the green, no red there. You just, you got to be careful. You just got to be careful because you're chasing. That's, that's all this means is you're chasing. And really, you just have to look at a chart to see that. Um... But a lot of times there'll be a wash there. Like I think Netflix was similar. Let's see. Yeah, you see Netflix up here. Like, you know, so once you get up here, you just want to be careful as far as starting any new positions that you're looking for big upside. Again, if you're looking to trade them, Jim, it's a different story. You know, but even then, I would wait for weakness. There'll be weakness, Jim. Like, you see this cop? Eventually, there's going to be some sort of tug on this thing. I mean, how many days is it up in a row for crying out loud? And so when you see that little tug, you see that little breather, um, that's the perfect spot for a look for, you know, some action to come in there uh, just to give us an idea they're supporting these names because, you know, again, they've been underwater for a while. Look at this cop. I mean, no man's land for a long time. Uh, so that's something I would keep an eye on. Uh, a couple of you guys are asking ALNY. That's that biotech. Um, I didn't see much. I don't think I seen much action. Nothing that I remember. Let me see. Maybe you guys know better than me. I don't know. But quite a few bio. Oh, shit. When was this? 9-13? 9-12? October 95s? What is that? Did they have data? Shows you how much I know here, right? When was this now? What date? Hold on. That was October 95. They bought on 9, 12, 9, 13. Is that post gap or no? Move this thing out of the way. No. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What did they do? Catch, catch approval? Jesus Christ, George. And you see, this is honestly, maybe somebody mentioned to me that they had some sort of data coming or whatever it was. Look at those two big blocks there. Drug met endpoints. Wow. Yeah, this is a bio. This is a bio. 
I, you know, you see that? I don't remember this action. Maybe because they were blocks and not sweepers. There, two big blocks there on September 12th, September 13th, under 80 bucks. I guess that's why George was asking. 114. This thing hit 120. Wow, that's a score. What kind of score is that? 95s. George is saying he saw it and didn't play it. Oh, my God. Yeah, these biotechs are t Yeah, you got it. The only way, George, to play them is, you know, especially if you know they got some approval coming, you know, data pending, uh, just put in what you're willing to lose, small way, and treat them like lottos, you know? Look at the volume on that thing. Yeah, George is saying it was a big deal, Jim, on that news, obviously. But I do not remember that action before that. <sighs> Wow. That's why George was har harping on that AL and Y. Yeah, there's been um there's been a couple I mean quite a few hot biotechs. A B E O, that cheap one. You guys remember this cheap biotech? Finally had down day. Look at this move. A B E O. And look at the action in this thing. I rem I this one I remembered. I don't know why I wouldn't remember yours, this A L and Y, but the A B E O Stuck out like a sore thumb to me. Yes, SRPT continues to see action. Uh, that There's been action there for quite a bit now. Uh, here's this ABO right here. There it is. August 15th, right here. You had September, so those expired, but the stock was seven, seven bucks. Then 821, October bet, 775. Then another October bet at 12. This is this ABEEO. I never seen action in this name in my life before. Was catching, you know, caught three bets in the sevens. It hit 18 the other day, Jim. <laughs> 18. These biotechs are crazy. They're absolutely crazy. Now, granted, some of them crap out, a lot of them, but big risk reward there, you know? Uh, AAOI. We saw some activity in AAOI. It, I won't say it's interesting yet. It's becoming interesting. Okay. AA, AAOI, everybody, every member knows from the aggressive sweeper activity that came in this thing here. Okay. And then you had this monster move. Um, and a lot of us caught it. That's why we, we know this stock well. So the flow has gone dead since earnings. This was earnings, okay? And down here, um, we saw some buying. Let me show you what we saw. Nothing, nothing huge, though. Nothing huge. Uh, 9.5. Here was the sweep here. 9.5. So this was a good looking sweep. October 65s on 9.5. Okay, then we saw this bet, 9.22 weeklies. Um, we actually traded off of that. We had a nice move in minutes on that thing. This thing can move. But here's the bet, 9.5, October 65s. So that was over here somewhere. Oh my God, right at the lows. So you got higher levels here, but I would keep an eye um, on action, further action than this thing. You know, definitely has my eye now, um, just because, again, the action started to poke its head again. Uh, so here was that initial sweeper. You know, so this is coming in at higher levels, but this is nice. I like this pop, breather. So you want to see sweepers heat up here. That would be the go sign. Uh, Jim is asking, anybody know what happened to ICPT on Friday? That's a drug stock. What happened? Got, yeah, well, there's the other side of the drug stocks. ICPT. I don't. I didn't see anything on that, Jim. Uh, that rarely catches action. Once in a blue moon. But who knows what I missed? 
Uh, yeah, so yeah, AAOI, uh, for those of you asking, definitely on watch uh, for some sweeper activity uh, for a trade, maybe a bust out, test highs here again, the 70s, wow, God, up to 70. That pisses me off that this guy nailed the lows here, but you're getting a nice breather, a nice breather. Let me see, any names, you guys got some good names today, I like these names. Um... What names did I miss? Let me see. Any other interesting names? Oh, the airlines, uh, some guys are talking about here. I don't know. These are tough, man. These are tough. There's been uh, some flow in the airlines. UAL and, was it Delta? Had a little bit of action. They've been so beat up. So if you were looking to bottom fish, there's some flow. Let me see. Hold on. Let me get the UAL flow for you the recent flow and you know these here's the problem with these names they're always tricky sometimes you get a quick trade out of them you know I know they had a move recently that was pretty decent but if you miss that quick trade you end up holding the bag here and they've been abysmal here's the UAL action on 919 yeah that's back in June this is it here so they buy on November 65's couple of sweeps Nothing huge, but you got a couple sweepers there. November 65s, 919. Right here. So they started buying it right here. So it doesn't look like too much of a lift from there. Um, so if you like the name, you could use that action as confirmation for a trade. Again, that's November 65s. I wouldn't get caught up on, you know, the strikes. I would just use the action as potentially some momentum uh, to get a little bit of a lift out of here for a trade. Uh, who asked that? Whoever asked that, what are you looking for? Are you looking longer term or are you looking for just a trade out of this? Oh, yeah. So, Young, you can use that action um, for confirmation of just a trade. In other words, if you like it. If you don't like it, in other words, all the airline flow, if you don't like the setup, I wouldn't trade off the buying itself. In other words, don't trade the name just because it caught some flow. Make sure you 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 like it. Like it's something you would buy without the flow, and the flow gives you confirmation that, and they were sweepers, so that's a plus, um, that there's some momentum possibly coming here. Uh, that's the way I would look at it. Uh, yeah, Tesla... You know, I don't know what to make of it. You know, been choppy of late, had a nice move back down again. Yeah, again, Tesla is a good trade off the flow. Um, yeah, you need a little more of a pull. You want to see something like this if you're looking to give it a leash. You know, so you want to see a pull and then maybe action start to heat up. Uh, and then maybe you could get a lift back to test highs again. Uh, but from here... Like, let's say we're weak again, Monday, Jim, and you see Tesla sweepers come in. Uh, you probably got a trade there, you know, depending on what you're looking for. Now, especially that sentiment gets sour in this thing pretty quickly, right? The bears, as soon as there's some weakness, the bears think they got them. And then you see some sweeper activity and it sets up nicely. You know, this was picture perfect here, right? The bears thought they had them, bink, bink. Sentiment washed up completely. Some sweeper activity came in, and you know, you got a nice trade there because she can move. So, the deeper the pull, the better. Um, but, like I said, early next week, you get a further pull. I think a lot of these things in general, if we get a little further of a pull continuation, I think I'll set up a, a decent quick trade. It'll be an interesting week next week. Interesting week. You know, some of the stuff you got, a good chunk of it, you know, like we said, energy, financials, they've gone a little too much too quick. They need to breathe. And then you got a, another part of the market that, you know, has already started selling where the money can rotate back into that. So it's very interesting. Very interesting stuff. All right, guys, any final questions about floor or anything before we wrap it up? Like I said, I appreciate you guys coming around every Saturday. I think we only have two more after this. Uh, but I enjoy talking shop with you guys every weekend. I really do. And I appreciate uh, you guys coming out.
Uh, two more. Yeah, fire away. I'm not going anywhere. Uh, Google. Google's interesting. The There's been buying. Wait, let me get the last part. Why am I even trying to guess it here? There was some buying. Was it with the L? I think it was with the L. Usually when this thing's about to move, they play Goog without the L. Don't ask me why, but here's the last bet. And these are blocks. December 1040s. Uh, this was at higher levels. I think this guy's underwater, right? Oh, no. He's not underwater. Shit. So that was at 9. Uh, this price of the stock was 936 on Google. You see that right there? That's the reference price. So that tells you where the order went off on the stock. Uh, so that's what I'm saying, because we got not as much as I would like, but we have a decent amount of equity traders. I'm an equity trader. This stuff is vital information. Uh, you can see the size that came in. Uh, oh, this was July, so that's... Oh, well, these are still open, maybe November's, but that was back in July. Uh, this was the latest bet, 829, December 1040s. Uh, that was at 936 as far as the stock price. Oh, I left that up there. So I like this base. You see this base? I like this. I like this a lot. This is what I like. It frustrates the living daylights out of. All the riffraff out there. Oh, Google's going to go, right? Chase the high. Shit. Lost their money. Google's going to go. Shit. Lost my money. Google's going to go. I'm buying some weeklies. Shit. I lost my money. You know, that side of thing. Sounds evil, but I like this pattern. Um, I, I I mean, sweepers, sweepers away. That's what I would say. Sweepers away from being a quality setup here. Uh, you already got the big bet there. I mean, it's at you know ten bucks lower than where it is, or eight bucks lower than where it is. Not that big of a deal for Google, um, but I think you're sweeper one good looking sweeper away from a nice setup there. And this is my point. Um, Brent is saying I grabbed a few of those October's. Oh, so nice, Brent. So this is um, what was I gonna say here? This setup is nice, and this is what I was talking about in this market. Like, you look at some of the energy names, the financial names that are a bit extended, right? You look at a cop, it looks like this, just up every day. And then you've got a handful of stuff out there like this Google. So if they do some profit-taking and some of the hot stuff, and the theme of rotation continues, they're going to rotate into this shit. You know, so you may have like, you know, maybe Netflix, who knows, I'm just saying Netflix, Apple, um, there'll be some selling there, or maybe they consolidate, and then we'll start to see some sweeper activity come into Google, and then you'll see Google acting a lot better, right? Because Google, while the rest of them were hot, Google has been awful, really. I mean, awful in the sense that it's just been consolidating, you know, not selling. Um, but I, I like to see these lengthy consolidations. It reminds me of WIM, you know, when we saw that lengthy consolidation, um, and then you start to see sweepers really heat up, and it comes out of that consolidation, and you get big move. You know, and you get that same theory where yep, you got the retail traders trading it, and they're playing for the breakout. And every time they play for a breakout, they get smashed. And then the final time, what do they say? Oh, we're, we're not falling for this trick. We're not buying this breakout. And she goes. And if it has sweeper activity, you know, within that, even better. So I would definitely keep an eye on Google or any name um, that's had flow or consolidated um, for that matter. Yeah, Boeing is ridiculous. I mean, give me, I can't believe the move on this Boeing. This is psychotic, no? You want to know why the Dow goes up every day? Look at this thing. 
But Jim, you know what you know what the crazy part is? There are a lot of names that you wouldn't think would have this type of strength and momentum. While wow, Young is saying he caught a uh, lotos on, on Boeing a thousand percent. Ridiculous. Don't want to get to your head, Young, but that's a nice hit, brother. That's a nice hit. Um Names like this, okay, that you didn't think can move like this, have exploded. Yeah, I go back to the Pfizer. I didn't think Pfizer had a move like this in it. I really didn't. You know, Gilead, right? Gilead finally had its day in the sun. Um, and that's why, you know, we're seeing GE flow. Makes you scratch your head, right? I, I would lump that into the same category. Um, Verizon. You ignore all these things. Yeah, Qualcomm is, I wouldn't put them in that category, but yeah, you know, Qualcomm's been a good stock. Just, re, you know, lately, this year has been awful. Um, but I wouldn't put it, Qualcomm used to be a missile, that stock. Qualcomm was some stock back in the day. Uh, but, you know, like like Pfizer, it's almost like Ford, you know, Ford, Pfizer, Verizon, GE, those are not, as a trader, you know, those aren't names you focus on, Boeing, and, and, you know, little by little, this market picks up another one of those names and is taking it along for the ride, Right? And that's why this flow in GE uh, has my eyes peeled. I'm always suspicious of GE. I mean, it, it's the worst of the worst. Let's be honest. Even Boeing, Fi GE is the worst of the worst. There's no worse than GE. Um, but, again, you had somebody scoop up uh, November and March calls by the buckets. So an interesting name to keep on your screen. Yeah, I wouldn't go crazy on it, but maybe worth a trade. I think if you have time on your side, uh, you'd be better off, obviously. Um, but even for a trade, it's worth, an, uh, worth a look. All right, guys. All right, let me run here. You can hit me up on Twitter, or if you guys are members, you, you know where to find me anyway, uh, if you have any questions at all. Uh, the most of you are aware uh, WallStreetJesus.com, if you're new, I saw somebody mention that they are new. You have any questions about what I do flow-wise, sweeper-wise, um, what the hell is this? Uh, how you can get involved and stuff like that, uh, just go to WallStreetJesus.com. There's a strategy section where you can go there, a couple blogs, short blogs on explaining the stuff we look at. All right, and as far as um, membership things we offer, we offer 50% off the first month uh, throughout the Saturday Sweep series. You get everything included. Uh, this room here with the alerts, the search features, a live audio video throughout the day, which is a big plus. I'm on there all day talking flow in real time as the tape um, comes in. All right, we do uh, aftermarket webinars and stuff like that as well. Um, that's in this package. You get everything included, included private, including private Twitter in the mix. Okay, uh, which is this. You get flow, open interest updates, some sentiment updates, all the flow alerts in real time. Okay, so that's included. You get Twitter included. If you're looking just to test the waters, uh, you're looking for something a little more affordable to get a feel for things initially, uh, we offer private Twitter. Uh, we spun it off into its own entity now uh, for just 59, basically 60 bucks a month, uh, and you just get access to private Twitter. All right, so that's our Wall Street Jesus. Scroll to the bottom of the page, right where you can make uh, Jesus reign here. All right, so any questions, hit me up. You guys know where to find me. Uh, Xavier saying, are you going to create another course on equities besides the wise guy course? Besides, the Yeah, Xavier, I'm looking to do something um, this winter, uh, probably more gear around equities than options. You know what I mean? Because uh, I want to get more equity players involved. I think a lot of people just 
you know, they know it's options flow. You know, that's the edge uh, we, we're using. But you can use it for so many different purposes. You know, you, we got people who trade ES, CL futures. They don't trade any equity, any options. They just trade futures, and they're in the room. Uh, so they use it just for sentiment reasons. Um, again, my opinion, we don't have enough equity players as members. Uh, you know, we got a decent amount of members, and a lot of them are option players. And that's a common thing because, again, we're watching options flow. Uh, but I think, you know, equities, I I'm telling you, like, this recent rally, I kid you not, I, a lot of equity players that I've worked with and I know, and most of them are equity. I don't know too many option players that I work with because uh, I'm an equities player myself. But they've absolutely killed it over the past two months, killed it. Uh, so there's a lot of juice, whether you're swing trading, day trading, uh, on the equity side. Um, there's a huge edge in this stuff. So, yeah, Xavier, this winter I'm looking solely to do something structured around uh, the equity side of things. So we'll keep you informed on that uh, probably coming this winter. All right, but thanks for that question. All right, guys, so you, again, any questions, wallstreetjesus.com, and you know where to find me. Uh, otherwise, I'll see you during the week and next Saturday. I appreciate you guys coming out. Have a great weekend.